two, check it, check it, one, two. How's everybody doing today? Come on in, come on in. Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is going to be a really fun live stream today. We're going to have a really good time. We're going to be doing a lot of cool concept art in Photoshop, 2D concept art, helping provide direction for the team who's doing the 3D art. That includes Felipe. Um, and this is for a game called Twisted Tower, which is basically Alice in Wonderland meets Bioshock. Um, I wanted to say a huge, 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 huge thank you to Kyle, Pierre Alessandro, Elizabeth Peterson, Stephen Udit S, Todd Bondsman, and Axie Pepe. Thank you so much for joining YouTube Game Dev. YouTube Game Dev is my premium course dedicated to teaching you guys how to make game development your full-time gig with the help of YouTube. And I know that sounds weird. It's like, what? You can make video games while being a YouTuber? Yeah, it's possible. It's a, it's a very interesting business model. And I know we have over, I think, 500 students currently. Um, so if you want to get 40% off this program, it's live for 10 days. And after those 10 days, this course will be closing down and enrollment will close. You get 40% off, but you're also going to get my courses, Stream My Game, which is all about how to get YouTubers to stream your game. And also uh, my course, Fan Base Framework, which is all about how to get um, a big, massive email list that supports you and your games. So check out the link below. I will see you guys inside of Photoshop in just a second. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. First thing on today's docket is to provide some feedback for our 3D artist, Felipe. Felipe just hopped on his lunch break, so I'm gonna spend some time giving him feedback for this tower here. He did an incredible job. He was using this sketch that I created. I think this was during a live stream, maybe, was it three days ago? And so this was the sketch, right? And then we both went in together and started creating the very simple block out here. And this was actually much harder than it looks. Um, we really had to be precise about where things were placed so that the composition looked balanced, right? The composition of the tower. So he did an incredible job here. One thing I want to make sure we take note of here is I think that these wires here are actually a little too thick. And so what I'm going to do is just thin them up just a little bit. Okay. So after we do this today, we're going to actually go into our UI that we we're working on yesterday. We're working on the weapon wheel for the game. And we talked about this yesterday, how important it is to stay focused on the theme of your game. Uh, or the hook of your game, or what's the, what's the, what era are you in? What's your game about, right? And that is what we really want to focus on today. So we're going to jump inside of our UI and make sure we stay on point with the theming. The theming in this game is, well, it's basically Alice in Wonderland. So 1930s, creepy spirals and like spirals like this, flags, theme park vibes, gambling, Carnival vibes, Disney World, Willy Wonka. So right now we're just going to thin up these wires for Felipe so he knows kind of how thin I want them. And I told him, I said, that this one screenshot here is going to sell the game. And so it's very, very important to get this perfect. What's the most important part of your game? The beginning, the middle, or the end? Who knows? What's the most important, especially if you're making a linear game, is it beginning, middle, or end. What do we think? Hey, Natrix. Gordon. Welcome, Gordon. Guys, Gordon is our lead developer. He's doing an incredible job on Twisted Tower. Everybody say hello to Gordon and make him feel better about himself because he really needs it. Um, yeah. Based on playing Bioshock, the beginning, and that's from Ratbag. All right, so we want to go that thin, right? 
and maybe thin these up a little bit here. It's actually more time consuming than I thought it was. What about adding some fireworks in the distance? That's a great idea. Wow. All right. Linear, I think the middle. You think the middle is the most important part of a game? You might be right, maybe I'm wrong. I think it's the beginning for sure. Okay, these flags. I feel like we need one more in the middle. Like a yellow one or something, you know what I mean? But let's try it out and see what we get. I'm getting hot sweaty. I think I need to turn the fan on in just a sec here. All right, we're almost there, guys. Almost done with this little concept art, and then we're going to go to um, working on the UI. I'm really excited to show you guys the UI. Yesterday, we were working on the UI for the weapon wheel, and one of you, I, I can't remember who it was, maybe it was your name, Nate? Maybe it was Nate? Came up with this incredible idea to do um, cards, a deck of cards that you can sort through to choose your weapon. I thought that was really smart. It's those really simple ideas that are not necessarily, you know, 100% available to us instantly. And you kind of have to dig through your brain to find them. It's those ideas that make games great. The patient ideas. Oh, that looks so much better. Goody, goody. And who knows how we accomplish this? You'll notice that there's some dense fog here. We're using the Unity's global fog. It's very dark. How are we accomplishing these vibrant colors? Does anybody know? Because those colors should actually just be dark and bleed into the fog. So how exactly are we letting these colors pop through? Does anybody know? Cotton candy collectible. <laughs> Digital Squirrel says, I'd say that the beginning of the game is the most important. Give the player a reason to stick around. That's awesome. I agree. Uh, I feel like the beginning is this from Max. Um, I feel like the beginning is important to uh, hook the player and is important to make the overall experience feel great. And I would say like rewarding, like reward what was promised. Um, the middle just keeps them going. Yeah. All right. Very good. Oh, Seb. Seb had the idea. I'm sorry. It was Seb to do the, uh, the cards. Um, so that's how we want the flags to look. We want the windows. Next thing Felipe needed uh, some direction from me on is how we want to do the windows. Let me show you guys how we're going to do the windows. We're actually going to take a long vertical slice. This is going to blow your mind. We're going to take a long vertical slice like this. We're trying to capture that Art Deco vibe. We're going to do one there. In fact, we could probably just fill her in like that, and that's about all we need. You can even do a little thin little slice, maybe even thinner up. You do one here, one here. And it's best when you're doing this kind of stuff to see it from a distance. And I'm looking at my right monitor here for some smaller, a smaller uh, image. It's on my right monitor. There's a smaller version of Photoshop that I can see. And it helps me know if I'm properly scaled or uh, properly laying things out, because windows can look bad really fast. That's something I've noticed over the last decade. Windows tend to be very, they can be very, uh, they can look PC and fake almost. It's weird. It's a really weird thing. Oh yeah, we're getting there. And we'll fade out a few of them at the top. That's creepy. Maybe one right here. And what he's gonna do, I think Felipe's going to create a sort of a decal or a facade that has an emissive. And by the way, I asked earlier, how are we getting these colors to pop through 3D if there's this dense dark fog? And the answer is emissives. So if you set the texture to emissive, it'll shine through the fog. And that's how we're doing it. Okay, now I feel like we're in balance down here. So we're gonna just throw one right here, maybe even two, scale it up just a tad, and then there we go. What do you think about this, Gordon? 
All right. By the way, those of you just joining us, just remember you can join YouTube Game Dev below for 50% off. Or 40% off, I'm sorry. I just, I just lied, sorry. 40%. And guys, when I do these ad reads, just so you know, it keeps us independent, meaning we don't have to take sponsorships. Uh, we just sell our own content, and that keeps us live and on air on YouTube. Um, the sad reality is, without you guys, you know, enrolling in courses and buying products, it would be very difficult to justify continuing to do YouTube. Um, money, money goes a long way, and it helps a lot. So I really appreciate you guys. It means a lot to me. I think that that might be too much. Maybe just one. Yeah, that's kind of cool. That's all we're gonna do. Um, oh, what was the next thing? Well, I think we should probably at least throw in some bloom just so we know we need that to be pretty bright up there. Um, and then these guys, they need to be more vibrant. So I'm gonna take the red, what the F? There we go. Um, and then we're just going to set up contiguous, turn off contiguous. Actually, let's just use this and just brighten them up. Yeah, these need to be more emissive, less shiny. And then we're good to move forward with the UI. So all I'm going to do is just brighten it up here. Miss Cloud Game says, oh, thank you, Miss Cloud. Miss Cloud Game says, the courses are 100% worth it. It even transferred in my music that I'm doing with marketing as well. That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Sometimes people don't like it when I sell courses. Um, they, it makes people mad. And I, I think I kind of understand it. Because a lot of people who sell courses are kind of sleazy. Um, but yeah. Okay. That's pretty great. Ideally, here's the ideal. The ideal is this. Watch. That's the ideal. It's way spookier when it fades out. But I think that's okay. So that's um, that's awesome. I think this is really all we need. Um, so I'm going to merge these together. Welcome to the park. And I'm going to paste this on Discord really quick for my buddy, Felipe. And then we're also going to do one more illustration, um, which is a, I'll show you in just a sec here, guys. We're going to do, and we're just using a mouse today for our concept art. Um, so let's go ahead and turn on our new one here. This is a new image here. This is just a wall, okay? But this wall is gonna have a giant entrance. Something like this. Okay. So let's go ahead and draw this entrance. We're gonna fill it in with some brown. And I told Felipe, I said, it doesn't need, we, we wanna do a mouth. I said it doesn't actually have to be a mouth. Um, it can be as simple as just stonework that kind of looks like a mouth. So we're going to create sort of an esophagus here. We really want the entrance to the tower to kind of be a uh, a very frightening and bizarre experience. And so I think that having you walk into a mouth is going to be pretty cool. Okay. Drop down the opacity for these guys here. Those are a little bit vibrant. Okay, something like that. Does it match the style of the game though? I'm not so sure. It would need to be stonework. And so in order to make it look like stonework, the first thing we're gonna do is make these stones, right? This is gonna be an interesting challenge for Felipe. And I've really figured out slowly the importance of 
doing concept art. Um, it's something that I've, I've kind of figured out slowly. It's my forte, which is coming up with really interesting shapes and keeping the style cohesive. And the only way we're going to do that is with really great concept art. I'm going to stand up. I like to fan on. All right. So let's see here. Let me pull up our chat. How's everybody doing? Just as a backup to the mouth entrance, what if it was a carnival tent entrance placed in front of the castle? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We could. Let's try the mouth idea first. Yeah, we could do a, tent, a carnival tent. That would be cool too. If you put highlights next to lowlights, you get a 3D effect. So here is the stonework. OK. So next in line, what we need to do is consider creating like a lip shape like this. I'm about to abandon this idea because I'm not sure it gets the job done. You know? I don't know. One sec. It could be cool. I'm looking at it. It's good to step away for a little bit because you can kind of see what makes it good and what makes it not good. It's so weird how the art works that way. You have to be thoughtful on how, how often you take breaks. Okay, let's see here. Um, I'm gonna check the chat here in a sec here. Check in the chat. I'm trying to do that more. Glad you did a concept of art instead of just selling, telling him, make a mouth. Yeah, I know, right? Um, I used to do that, and now I'm like, you know what? You should probably be more specific, Thomas, and be willing to spend the time. But you, you want that intro to really make an impact with, with the player. And so that's why we're focused so strongly on this introduction. Um, it's very, very important to inform the player what they're about to do and set expectations because then they'll be more forgiving. I mean, seriously, you'll be more forgiving if you go, okay, this is, a, uh, this is a story game. Okay, so don't expect crazy combat. It's more explorative. So if we, ex if we present this as a story game, I feel like we're going to do... do better in our reviews. Can you give us a very brief version of the story about how the game was born as father and eventually evolved into what is today? Well, I'm passionate about uh, what I'm passionate about. I put into my games. Um, that's, that's the general rule of my company, my studio, my studio is Thomas, whatever Thomas is weirdly passionate about in his head. That's what we're going to create. And look, you know, if, if people don't like that, that then, you know, they can make their own games. Um, but for me and my studio, that's kind of what we do. What is Thomas feeling today? Um, so about a couple years ago, I was really passionate about the story of Genesis um, in the Bible. I thought it was a really interesting story. I love it. And I still love it. I just don't think it's, it, it's really a good game idea. I don't think it's that great. Um, so... We, we, it was originally going to be about this big tree in the center of the Garden of Eden. So like uh, 
the tree of knowledge of good and evil and you go into it and you climb it, right? It was super abstract. It was very difficult to make it feel Tim Burton-y. And that's got one of the things I've realized is my bread and butter, which is, you know, studio or um, uh, American McGee, Tim Burton, Del Toro. It, it just comes naturally for me, that style. Um, let me know in the chat, guys, what's, what's a style that really comes naturally to you as a game developer? Does anybody know their style that just comes naturally? I'm going to save this really quick because I'm kind of liking it. So despite the fact that I really do like the story from Genesis, I just realized it wasn't very marketable and there wasn't a strong hook. And so then we decided, okay, well, what can we do? How do we make a tower game? Because I really, I've always wanted to make a tower game where you climb a tower. Uh, it just, it's really something I'm interested in. I don't know why. <laughs> I like the idea of presenting the player with a, a location to get to and they see it immediately and they start to climb. That's just really exciting to me. Um, so that was, uh, that was really all we had as a first person shooter and a tower. Um, and so I decided, wouldn't it be cool? It was originally called Timothy's Tower. And the song was, can you climb Timothy's Tower? Can you get to the top? Can you win a million bucks? Can you climb Timothy's Tower? Can you get to the top? Can you win a million bucks? And I would sing that with my kids, and I thought, that's a really cool game idea. So we called it Timothy's Tower, and then I changed it to Happy Hotel, and then I changed it to Twisted Tower. And it was originally just supposed to be sort of Art Deco hotel vibes. And then we realized, no, we need to go full on Willy Wonka. And then we realized, well, what is Disney mixed with Willy Wonka? And that is Alice in Wonderland. So now it's official, Alice in Wonderland first person shooter. That's the vibe. And you climb a tower and it's a theme park. It's not that difficult um, to wrap your head around. You just have to see it visually. Um, so like the trailer does a lot of work for us in describing what this game is. Is Blackthorn in the chat? Blackthorn is my buddy. Where's Blackthorn? Hmm. I wish they were. Okay, we've got ourselves a cool looking uh, mouth here. Let's clean it up though. Let's sort of make it thin on the side here. And we'll add a hanging ball in a sec. We'll add some teeth. Let's, hit, let's shift the hue a little bit. It's a little too green, I think, or maybe we need to shift it more blue. There we go. Uh, we also can probably add some flourishes here to make it feel more like it fits into the world. Yep. I'm going to turn on some music here in a sec to capture that vibe. That looks a little too, we need to throw in Art Deco. So what can we do, Art Deco? Well, I would say a trim piece along the bottom that captures the Art Deco. This is important actually. Felipe and I are trying to capture, what is Alice in Wonderland and Art Deco? Like how can you combine the two? That's really what we're aiming for here. So we're gonna do some kind of a trim piece here at the bottom that captures the Art Deco vibe. We're just gonna throw in, yeah, we're gonna add some little stonework here. Yeah, I, I've been slowly realizing that me and me and Felipe really make a, a dream team um, because my way of communicating ideas, he can, he really knows how to execute them. So if I just do some illustrations for him in my own little weird Thomas Brush style, he can replicate those in a 3D style. So look, we have a big stone here. See that stone work, guys? We drop down the opacity, I'm sorry, the uh, brightness. Why are we doing stone work at the bottom? So that we can throw in some Art Deco uh, decor at the bottom of the mouth. Okay, but we're gonna do a little bit of a highlight here. Watch the highlight, watch, 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 watch. This is gonna add a lot of value to this. We just need a little subtle highlight. And oftentimes I'm just putting highlights just to communicate what this is. It doesn't necessarily have to be. And who am I communicating to, by the way, guys? When I'm creating art, art like this, I'm trying to communicate an idea that's in my head 
to my team, okay? So that's the goal here. Now you're wondering, Thomas, this doesn't look like teeth or a mouth. Well, and also let's, let's throw in that Art Deco vibe. So let's type in Art Deco on Noun Project. By the way, those of you just joining us, just remember you can join YouTube Game Dev Below, who is our sponsor, and that is me. I'm my sponsor. Um, it helps support the channel, helps us continue to create content. So thank you so much for those of you who do join. And let me know in the chat if you do participate in my programs. I can't get Noun Project running, so we're going to wait for that. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of a drop shadow here so that this mouth or these lips look a little bit more accentuated. Oh, it's at the top there. Yeah, there we go. Good, 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 good. Okay. Now, one thing we want to do here is maybe just add some cuts to the stonework. This is going to be an interesting, difficult thing to do. I'm, I'm curious if this is going to be a little too abstract for Felipe. I might need to be a little bit more precise with what I'm doing here. Okay. I think that can work. I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Let's let's see what we can do with the teeth. Maybe the teeth will solve some problems for us. teeth are going to be stones like that. I don't like the mouth. I'm going to tell Felipe to make a just make a grand entrance with curtains like this. I'm just gonna do something with curtains. I think the mouth idea is stupid. Um, something like this. Well, if the lips were red, we'd have to make them made out of like plastic and then you're just drifting way too far. So I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't drifting way too far from the style that we want to aim for. So I think I'm just going to go with curtains here. And I think that's all we really need to worry about. And he's probably going to be happy about that because the mouth was going to be tough. So we're going to do just a curtain. And you'll notice I'm using the polygon tool, polygon lasso tool a lot here. Um, that's because you can get some really stylish shapes, but it also kind of matches the 3D environment. Um, because in 3D, that's kind of what you do. You work with straight lines and vertices and quads and tries. All right. I don't need to be too precise here. We can move on to the UI in just a sec here. Something like that. And we'll darken the top here, or the bottom. Do a little bit of a drop shadow. And could probably do this. Ooh! Let's do stripes. Striped curtains. That'll make it feel more carnival y. We'll do it along the the black part here.
Let's throw some music on really quick, guys. Um, let's see here. I need to hear some music from the game because I'm starting to lose sight of what. Here we go. Yeah, it helps me know, uh, excuse me, if we're on track. Okay, here we go. Creamy white, something like that not perfect but I just need Felipe to know kind of the general idea of what we want and he can take it from there so white and red stripes is the goal all right did we make the music for the game itself yes I wrote the mu I've been writing music for the last two weeks So some kind of rod, ooh. We could do a, a standard rod here, like this. We could do gold. Like that. And then at the top of it, you could do some kind of swirl. So it feels more art deco. Like this. That's going to be cool. Don't be afraid to go big, you know? That's what I'm learning. Don't be afraid to go really hard, and really big. Jeez, Thomas. Um. Let's see here. Take all this here and convert it and then just scale it up and see what we get. Yeah. The question is how's it connected? And we'll do something like this. Right? We'll do a big golden sort of gate. Let's see what's, what this will look like. It'll be like a door. A, a sort of a, a path going in. Like this. Deep into the walls. A little bit darker here. This is tough, you know, the entrance needs to be great and I'm not sure it's great. So. Uh, we could probably round it, you know, like this. Yeah, I probably need to do that.
An ancient door, huh? That's kind of cool. Just a standard golden door is fine with me. Yep, standard golden door. And how do we... I don't know if we're there. I just don't... I feel like we need a golden frame or something. I guess we could create a frame out of some stonework here. You know the love boat rides? Do a boat ride. Yeah. Ancient columns. So like big columns right here. Yeah, that might be cool with some spheres on top. Like maybe some spiraled spheres. That might be cool. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna ask Felipe to do what he does best here. Is it possible to just make the entrance similar to the previous one? Because the previous one was pretty great. So, the mouth isn't working. See what he says. And then we'll paste in our new graphic. Um, I thought I gave it to him. It just, what? It didn't save what I just worked on. Okay, we'll, we'll get it from the previous stream. Let me see if I can grab it from the stream, the image. That sucks. It didn't, uh, that really sucks. It didn't save. Where is it? Hmm. Let me grab it from the stream here. All right. There it is. Crap. One sec, guys, sorry. Okay, 
Um, let's brainstorm really quick, guys. Uh, I w I'm kind of thinking, like, what if it was... What if it was really silly? Like a little... Like a keyhole. I'm gonna tell Felipe to hang tight. In Willy Wonka, the entrance is some small little hole. In Alice in Wonderland, the entrance is a small hole in the ground, right? What if it was a a giant uh, key, a little keyhole? What if it was a keyhole? Um, does that does that seem cool? And it spirals. That's a great idea, Thomas. A crack in the wall is cool too. Something silly, yeah. A Coraline type entrance, that's a good idea. I like the idea of a crack in the wall. That's really cool. And it just sort of, um, you just sort of fade into the next level. Mr. Twister. I'm, trying to, but I'm thinking about some themes here. Um, is Alice in Wonderland, does she go through a keyhole? Does she go through a keyhole in Alice in Wonderland? Because I don't want to steal that. I don't think I do. Does she go through a keyhole? Um, a wooden door with a welcome mat? That's funny. Yeah. So who goes through a keyhole? Does anyone go through a keyhole? Um, who goes through a keyhole? Because I don't want to be stealing something. I don't. I can't remember. Sorry, I'm t I'm talking to Felipe right now. He's helping me brainstorm the keyhole wall. All right, um, no keyhole? Okay. A mirror, that's cool. Guys, let's, let's really brainstorm this. Let's think of something small and silly and almost hidden to get into the tower. Um, I kind of like the idea of you want to get in the tower and there's a big door and it says welcome, but it's like barred and blocked. I don't know if we need to be this clever. Just do a damn door, you know? A well, that's cool. A ticket insert. I No, we need to communicate that this is a theme park. So really, we need the entrance to feel like a theme park entrance. That's That's officially it for me. Okay, um, Carnival Tent Entrance, that's a good idea. It, it needs to feel like a theme park, okay? So I'm just gonna say this.
Okay, so I've said, okay, so it needs to feel like a theme park entrance. So ticket booths on both sides, stanchions, a path. I would say a path with a red carpet, a golden door, and a neon sign above it saying welcome. I, like, I don't feel like, I just don't feel like it's smart to get too clever here because we're still trying to, remember what we're trying to do is trying to communicate what this game even is. And if, if they're going through a keyhole or they're going through a crack in the wall, they're going to think, what is this? Is this, why am I going in a castle? Instead, it needs to be, nope, you're going in a theme park, but it's abandoned. That's really what we need to do. Um, yeah, that's about all we need to do. Okay. All right, so here's what we're working on now. We got some UI stuff to do. Um, we need to figure out how to do the weapons. So this is kind of what we're going to go for here. Um, so I want to see if this sort of style works well with every single weapon. So I'm going to copy the layer style here, paste the layer style, and there we go, right? I think we could probably flip it. And these are our cards, right? So the question is, can we make the stroke look sort of disheveled? Um, pattern. Oh, wow. I think I got something here. We're going to take, watch this, guys. We're going to take this, and we're going to create a new pattern out of it. So we're going to make it 1920 by 1920, paste the pattern, and then also, um, give me a sec here. Mm, yeah. So what we could do is we could just find some, um, let's see here, find some grunge texture. And we're going to use this so aggressively. We're going to change it so much that I think we'll be fine legally. So if I take this like that and scale it up and then do a crazy curve change like this, watch what we can do. We can have a line pattern here. This is going to be kind of cool. I think you guys are going to like this. Um, where we take this and put it over that and then set it to multiply. Um, we don't need it that black. What color do we need? It needs to be this color here. So I'm just going to put this here. And then we're going to do a hue saturation shift 0 or 100 or 50. And we're trying to make a grungy shoot. Hmm. Let me take this here. Uh, invert. We're try trying to make a grungy pattern that we can use for our lines. Um, so we're going to go to hue saturation shift here and then shift it to be the same as, I don't think we can, can we? Because it's set to, this is set to multiply. Okay, maybe we can just, uh, I think I have a better idea. Set it to multiply and then drop it down. There we go, let's try that. Save this as a pattern. <laughs> Define pattern. Grunge brown. Then we're going to use this in our UI. Go to our stroke here, which is that one. We're going to set it to normal. And then we're going to do a fill type, and we're going to do pattern, and we're going to go to our grunge and see if we can get it to look right. Look. See, guys? So I think what we need to do is we need to probably, we just need a lot more grunge, honestly. So let's do some more. And that's not surprising at all. <sighs> I 
we're going to just create a little sort of stamp almost that we can use over and over again for this. So. We really want more of that dark grunge color. We want that more than the, the white. So let's do this. OK, uh, let's define the pattern here. Define pattern. And then we're going to use that again, right? So let's try it again. What are we doing? We're creating a grungy stroke. Okay. We're going to use that there. There we go. And then opacity. Kind of wish it was more of that, that brown color there. So that stinks. So let's see if we can solve this. Select all of the more brown colors here. Color eyes. We can try that. I don't know if that's going to do it, but uh, it's uh, I mean, maybe it maybe it'll work, guys. I'm not sure. The reason why I'm doing it this way and not doing a mask over it is because I want it to be uh, quick and scalable. So like, the older you get in terms of be, like your age in the game industry, the more you care about scalability because you're just thinking, man, I know I'm gonna change this down the road. I know I'm going to change this down the road. And so I'd rather have something scalable. That looks good. I think it's fine for now. Um, I'd much rather, if we could go to our card here, um, I kind of wish this wasn't set to overlay. And it was, we're kind of going to go through each one of these, which sucks. Speaking of scalability, and just see if that makes it better. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe drop the, the stroke down a little bit. Yeah. This one we could probably drop down to. And then the stroke, we could probably bring up the scale. I'm sorry. Uh, match the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, come on, Tom. What are you doing, buddy? Yeah. And then drop the, op what is it? Oh, yeah, it's this. That actually looks really good. I'm looking at it from far away. And we just want a subtle outline, nothing crazy. That's cool. I like it. Um, this is a struggle, but we're going to go for it. So basically what we need to do is go inside of each card, set it to normal, not overlay, and set it. We're just going to do a straight 40% and just go through each one, which I know it's, it really sucks, but we're going to have to do it. Each card looks a little bit different, by the way, um, because there's like, well, that's not true. That's not true at all. Look, watch. Well, oh, they have cuts. Do I really care? I don't think I care. Because I can just duplicate it like this. Oh, no, I do care. Um, it's just too much work. So we're going to select everything. We only have to do it 10 times, guys. 30%. Normal mode, save. And it might be nice to have these all different so that maybe we can do different flourishes um, for each card. So by flourishes, I mean what's in the corner here. Uh, so just select those, hit normal, do 30%, save it out, close, close, save, yes. So you see how what we're doing, guys, is we're setting, making it so that that stroke matches that stroke. Yeah, I know. It's like it, it seems kind of silly uh, to worry so much about it, but it, it really matters. Um, if you're going to use strokes in your game, um, you really, really want them all to be the even, even width, 
even coloring, even style. And so you can see here, it's just a very subtle stroke going around that we've created. And that's important. Um, but we want these to match as well. Whew, guys, I, I, I want to be honest with you about something. I quit zinning for a little bit. Who knows zin? Anybody know zin? I'm being honest with you guys here. Who knows what zin is? And for those of you who don't, you probably shouldn't start because it's going to be not easy for you. But uh, Hector's in here. He knows all about it. Actually, Hector, you said you didn't like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I stopped. And I can't stop thinking about it. Um, yeah. Look at that cool little stain on there. I love it. And I want it, the blood splatter. This is so cool. I wish I could show you how I did this because I kind of figured out a trick yesterday. Maybe I'll show you guys in a sec. These we're going to set to to the correct uh, color, but they're not cur the current correct color. So we're going to fix those. Yeah, nicotine is a neuro enhancer. It's good for your brain. I mean, it is. It's pretty great, actually. Problem is, it's insanely addicting. Um, it's the, I think caffeine is the number one addicting substance in the world. And then after that is nicotine. I've been trying to quit drinking so much coffee too. Fortnite power says I know the feeling. So smoking is going to make me a better programmer. Probably. I'll be honest with you. Probably. But it's not really worth the whole, you know, cancer. And yeah. But then again, Zen doesn't really cause any problems like that. Uh, except for it makes your tummy hurt sometimes. You're very good with Photoshop. Where were you also good with artwork in your childhood with paper art? Yes, I was. I'm pretty good with drawing and stuff. I was the art kid. Who was the art kid at school? Yes or no? Say yes if you're the art kid or no if you weren't. Who was the art kid? Mm, they all match now. Yes, <laughs> Daniel was not. Microcosmic, yep. Art kids. Art kids all day. All right, we're going to paste some layer styles. You guys are going to see why I, why I decided to make that stroke. Um, it's so that we can do stuff like this. Really quickly add that detailing to make it look like it's sort of printed and maybe even like embossed a little bit. Maybe we'll even do an embossing. Um, I wonder if we can make it look gold. We could do, let's try a bevel here. You got me tearing all my hair out, hair out. Increase the depth, soften it, size. It kind of looks like it's embossed on there, and I wonder if you made it kind of look like it was a gold foil. Let's try it. Zoom out. I, I just want them to look like the weapons, honestly. It's not something I'm really interested in. Um, so I don't really like that mask. Okay, let's get all of our 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 our, our blah, blah, weapons on here. Transform, flip horizontal, and we're gonna rotate all these cards in a circle. It's gonna be challenging, but we're gonna need to do it. And while we do that, we're gonna need to reposition the guns so they look good upside down. 
So there's a, there's a whole process here, but I'm gonna go to our renders. Where is it? There it is. Shouldn't all icons kind of be uniform? Nah, no, stick, because we're gonna be rotating all the cards, and so it's, we're gonna to have to reposition all of them in a, in a balanced way that is gonna make sense mentally, but not necessarily with math, um, if that makes sense. Um, okay, next weapon is the shotgun, or um, yeah, the shotgun here. It's very beneficial to have your weapons sort of ready to roll. So I've got all my weapons on this massive high-res document um, that we can use in all of our UI. Um, so there it is. Go ahead and convert it to a smart object. Why? Because we might want to go into the high-res render and update it um, later. Paste layer style, transform, flip horizontal. And again, we can scale and unscale or descale um, depending on how big the card is. Yeah, these are probably, we probably need to fix these. You're right, these are need to be 40, not 30. Good, good catch, um, Lucas. Good catch, buddy. Whoa. That was a really good catch, man. Props to Lucas. How did you see that? Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, what's next? Well, we've got our shotgun, we've got our fast sort of Tommy gun weapon, we've got our pistol, we've got our ax, we've got next in line is the Magnum, I believe, yes. Convert that to a smart object, paste the style, and again, guys, it's so easy to get the same look. And if I want to edit these guns, which we're going to, we're going to redo all the guns, it's going to be really easy. Just jump inside of the smart, smart object. Yeah, when I doing the pox, the or not the popsicle, Nixon. It was the uh, uh, lollipop. Yeah, we're not doing that anymore. Um, what's next? The punk butt. Here's our punk butt. Transform, flip horizontal. Convert it to a smart object. Paste layer style. Scale it down. Sorry about my dog. Oh, Jebby's having a fit. Yeah, if they're going to be angled like that, we really want to flip the, the hearts and the spades and stuff. We want to flip them the other direction. But again, we don't... I'm unsure the direction of the weapons, honestly, because... Long story short, we don't know the, the, the direction of the weapons right now. So we're going to just keep moving. You're taking forever, Thomas. Get going. Convert, paste layer style. There we go. These are cool looking weapons. I believe I, I do agree. However, we're going to make them look more like toys in the in an update. Um, sniper rifles next. Whoopsie. Convert to a smart object, paste the layer style. Yeah, like this weapon doesn't really match the game style. You know? Almost there, guys. Uh, rocket launcher. I'm the guy who, when I'm walking away from my car, I press the lock button on my key fob like a million times. The same is true with copying and pasting. I'm like, control Z, control Z, control Z. I love it. really, really copy it. Because sometimes it doesn't work. All right, we got a rocket launcher here. All right. 
And then finally, we've got our wasp, which is our ray gun. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove these fellas, these whole clubs and valentines and stuff, because I don't even know where they need to be placed because sometimes it's conflicting with the weapon. As it stands, I think we're good to go ahead and create prefabs. No, don't do it, Thomas. Um, I'm actually going to take the weapons. They're good to go, but I'm going to put them right here. Just drag up, oh, Thomas. And we're going to rotate the cards. Now this is going to be a challenge because there's, there, there's some very precise math that needs to be done here. And so I'm curious about the, the solution here. How do you make a 10-stroke a, a circle? And I'm curious if we can just find one on Google. 10-stroke 10 uh, circle in 10 pieces stroke. Or maybe like a pie chart even. Oh, that's tough, but I think I got it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. That's the one. Google's our friend, guys. So we're just going to put this over top of everything, set it to multiply or normal, and just do this and set it to locked. And I think we probably should go with a pretty big scale. And basically we just have to center up the cards. Um, it's going to be going to be very interesting, but yeah. So we'll start with number one here. And I'm going to choose the tip of the card here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This one can go down here. No need to rotate it. Want it perfectly lined up. kind of want to shrink it because if we do number two here well we can rotate by 36 degrees that's totally fine however um, the question then becomes where do you position it right and so I think putting it at the top of the lines there I kind of want one that's a little bit more precise honestly but I like how they're sort of overlaid like that we're gonna try and see what happens this one's probably better. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll position the cards, uh, the top of the card at the circle. So I'm going to go a little bit closer, center it up. I'm going to kill this. We don't need it anymore. And this is actually not a bad way to go about this. Um, lock that in. And then we could probably put that there. Let's try and see what happens there. It's a little too close actually. So let's scale it up a little bit. It's stuff like this where I go, AI, are, AI will definitely make games 100%. But, and that's not correct. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's not right at all. What the heck? Divide a circle. Yeah, this isn't going to be right, guys. So we need to do this. Take the screenshot here, and I believe this is ten parts. Goodness gracious. Google, come on. One, two, three, wait, start here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's it. All right. So, no, the card doesn't rotate by 36 degrees. Well, I guess it could. You could have one here. Maybe. 
am I, am I mistaken here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, we could. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I don't love it though. So we're actually going to position it like this. No, 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 I've got it, I've got it. Oh, Thomas, um, we're gonna do this. Scale it up a little bit though. This one is like this. This is number three, so it's gonna be, how many is this guys? This is currently set to rotate to 36, so that one's gonna be what? Uh, 72, is that right? Let's try it. Come on, don't be, 72. Yeah, I think that'll work guys, what do you think? Let's make sure we save. All right, someone give me the next number, what's the next number? What is the next number, eh? One oh eight. Okay, what's the next number after this one, guys? Keep going. One forty two. One forty four. Whoops. Wait, what? No, that that one's one eighty, right? Obviously. And then this is what? One eighty and then plus another thirty six, right? Which is what? Guys, do the work. Come on, get going. Okay, 216. Who needs ChatGPT when you got a YouTube channel? Stop it. Why? Frickin' Photoshop. So what we need to do here is, I'm just gonna basically use this, uh, this value here, actually. So that's gonna be 36. Seventy-two. By the way, those are just joining us. Just remember, you can join YouTube Game Dev below to learn how to monetize a game development YouTube channel. It's a massive program where I teach how to turn a YouTube channel into, well, frankly, a full-time job. Now, a lot of you say, "Well, Thomas, you say you're a full-time game developer." Well, my income not only provides for me from both sources, from game development, working with or selling games, working with publishers, uh, ad revenue on YouTube, sponsorship deals, courses, all of that stuff is combined total. It supports me and two other developers. Okay, so that's, that's how effective having a YouTube channel is um, while also continuing to make games. So I teach how to do it in the course, click below, 40% off. Okay, what is this? That's 36, 72, or 36, 82. What was this one again, right here? What's this one? I can't remember. What, anyone know what it is? Um, this one right here. So it's that one. 108. Thank you. And then one final one, guys, which is uh, this one. What's this one? 144. But a good 144. Here we go. Woo! All right. Very good. That was like kind of something I was worried about. But we're all set. And that kind of looks cool. Like, 
Now what we'll do is add drop shadow to every single layer here. Watch what happens. Drop shadow. Uh, let's do it to one that's on top here. An inner shadow. Very, very simple, like two or maybe four. And then an inner shadow on the other side, which is like this. We're going to use a global light. This one, same thing. What's the global light going to do for us? It's going to ensure that uh, it looks like light is always coming from the same spot. Well, that sucks. I might just do the drop shadow, the, the one shadow then here. What? That's, that's good enough, I think. Okay, copy the layer style, paste it on all of this crap here. We gotta get rid of that ace. Paste layer style. Make sure the bevel looks correct. Uh, I think it's right. Yeah, we're good. Okay, next in line, we want this piece to be above. And that actually just solved my problem. Yeah, we're good. That's cool. Uh, save it out. What's next? Well, we had all those weapons, right? Well, we're gonna position the weapons over top each one. And that actually makes me think we don't want the drop shadow because we're gonna create, we're gonna be creating smart objects and I like my smart objects to the final parent to have the drop shadow. Drop shadow can be kind of a pain in the butt if it's uh, sort of nestled deep inside of a smart object. So we're gonna remove the drop shadow for now and we're gonna take these and position them. Does it make sense, guys, why I didn't care about the rotation? Because we're gonna be doing stuff like this. Oh, right? And it really is a, it's a subconscious sort of gut feeling about what they should actually look like. So I'm not sure what the math is here but I know what my brain is telling me. And it helps to look at the right side of the screen here. And it's also important to think about, okay, what's the player, if they're in an urgent moment where they really need to use the bathroom, I'm sorry, where they really need to choose the chain gun and they press tab, they need to be able to find it pretty quick and recognize it visually. Hey, Jalen Chaos TV, how are you? That one's hard to see. I'm looking at the right side of my monitor over here, which is a smaller monitor, or a smaller screen on my monitor. And it helps me know if the size is correct. Because it's kind of about the size of a Nintendo Switch on the right side of my screen. And who knows, maybe we'll launch on Switch. All right. Yep, so it's all about what looks best both visually as a whole, as one big unit, but also if the player's looking for a weapon really quickly, does this make sense? And I think that that's subconsciously kind of the way I wanna go. Subconsciously, that's what, what feels right for me. Why not make it inside Unity? What do you mean? Got to start in the art tool first. Right? Am I mistaken? Okay, so the weapons, I feel like they need to use some, they need to have some kind of a hue saturation shift so that maybe they're like sepia toned, you know? So that they feel more printed because they don't feel like they're printed on the cards right now. 
So scale that one up, that's fine. Scale this one up, that's fine. That's kind of weird to me, but then I feel like this is even weirder. No, I think I guess we're okay. No stick. This isn't just planning. This is literally the the. You'll notice it's a PSB. And I meant that kindly. No stick. Actually, this is a PSB. It's a Photoshop big document. So all of these these layers get distributed into Unity when we import it into Unity, and then we create our UI. And the U, UI is already ready to go. We just have to uh, split up the sprites and then put it back into the UI. That feels a lot better right there, actually. What about a card texture, like a small grid pattern on top of the gun and card? Like a half tone? You don't like the punk butt angle? Okay, I think we're good. Um, the next question is what can we do with a hue saturation shift? Um, on top of, let's say, like for example, if I take this and I do a hue saturation shift on this, like that, that actually feels really good. And then you sort of drop it down a little bit and then maybe throw in some contrast. Maybe less contrast, actually. That feels printed, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring these all over the place here. Keep going down. We'll make these smart objects in a bit. Yeah, my Photoshop document is getting really big, but that's okay. Um, yeah, that, that we're getting there. That feels that feels a lot better actually. Um, go up to the top here, and then the number one rule in making a game is don't freak out. You're gonna be all right. Okay, you're gonna be okay. The punk butt feels a little strange down here, um, but I think we're good. Yeah, it's it's much more sepia tone now, so it feels like cards, right? It's like they're printed. Um, next, thing in, next thing we wanna do here is um, throw on some hearts um so we're gonna do red hearts so i should know this cards so it's like spade diamond heart club and they all get their own colors right so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna type in heart here and a lot of you were saying yesterday like oh no thomas don't do, don't do that use like the own uh, like icons for the pistol the problem with that is that the the card loot the card doesn't look like a card anymore um, those icons are so recognizable that it's difficult for me to get rid of them so we're, we're going to use those do you see how it all of a sudden looks like a deck of cards now now i'm going to take these hearts drop down the opacity and then we're going to use them again um, right here, but we're going to make them a color overlay of red. My son's favorite color. He always says red. I like red. Desaturate it and then drop down the opacity a little bit. Okay, that's good. Maybe one more heart. Maybe put it over here. Ah! Take all those. Control, 
select, and then bring it all the way down to here. There we go. Nope, that didn't go the right direction. We'll make a smart object out of it. I think we're ready to make it. Well, we're not actually. We'll worry about the order after we make the smart object. It's, it's getting really, really, uh, whew, yeah. Rotate this a little bit better here. It's getting, um, getting messy. And then we're gonna fade out. We don't like this kind of conflict here. Yep, much better. Yeah, I can only do one thing at, one thing at a time. Jeez, Odd Horizon. There are no red hearts. And they should have a point, they should point towards the card. Really? Wait, why are there no red hearts? Yes, there are. Are there red hearts? A standard deck of play hearts and diamonds are red cards. Clubs and spades are black cards. So there's no black hearts. <laughs> okay. And they need to point up, really? Oh, you're right, like this? Okay, we're gonna just type in deck of cards. They point down, they, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. They point the other way and there are red hearts. There's no black hearts. You guys are ruining my day. This is ridiculous how precise you are. You think you're so cool. I'm being sarcastic, obviously. So this right here, we're just gonna put it right here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for catching that, seriously. I'm just being sarcastic. Okay, um, we have clubs, we can do black clubs. And the clubs face the top of the card. That feels more 1920, so we're gonna use this one. And black clubs are fine. Yeah, yeah. And they, yeah, they face up. But we're gonna make sure that they're scaled properly here. This is like, it seems like feature creep what we're doing here, guys. Like, why do you really care about this, Thomas? There's so much to do. We talked about this yesterday, but UI is such a valuable thing for your game because it can really bring the whole game together. Whereas a lot of maybe you couldn't worry, you couldn't, you couldn't focus for too long or you couldn't manage a bunch of really cool graphics like 3D art for your level art. So if you can't do that and you don't have the time to do it, you can do it in the UI, right? So that's why I'm a big fan of UI. It solves a lot of problems for you. It helps you capture the theme that you're, that you're aiming for. Okay, got clubs, good, good, good. Oh, Thomas, ouch. Watch your neck, dude, don't do that again. All right, we could do one down here as well. This one, you'll notice that the chain gun needs to be rotated like this now. That's fine. Well, you know, feature creep can be attention to detail, and attention to detail can be feature creep. It really has to do with are you, are you, are you helping your game and tightening the hook, or are you not? For example, the game is Alice in Wonderland meets Bioshock. Here was the previous UI. This is an old UI, right? It doesn't match. So it's really important that we capture. Um, Raycast should be a diamond, okay. Capture that vibe. I agree about the Raycast. You got me tearing all my hair out, hair out. And 
we'll do it with the uh, shotgun as well. Shotgun, we're going to break a rule here, but it's worth it. The shotgun, I need the I need those clubs there. I never really like clubs. I'd rather just stay home. I also don't like dancing. So we're going to sort of fade this out so we can see it better. Ugh, that looks really bad. Hang on. Maybe we'll put it over here. Try that out. Save it. That's kind of cool looking. All right. Mm. Seb Lareme just came up with one of the greatest feature creep ideas ever, which is <laughs> make it so you can flip the card upside down and see all the stats. That sounds, that sounds, uh, it really does sound cool, but there's only so much we can do, right? Okay. Let's, um, we got hearts, we got clubs. We'll have one, two, three, four left for diamonds. I feel like we could probably use another, wait, no. Hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. Oh, it is a good idea. Tuck Mac says, golly, what a dad joke. Didn't know this was called father again. I came up with a really good joke that I just love. Can I tell it to you guys? What do you call the husband of a mistake? Who can get it? What do you call the husband of a mistake? I'm going to wait and see. <laughs> Jason, yay. That's, yay. <laughs> oh, hey guys, Jason's in the chat. Jason is one of my neighbors and we're good friends now. We just got lunch together, didn't we, Mr. Jason? All right, so we got a club down there. Mr. Stick. Ozma Hussein wants Thomas to do everything at once. <clears throat> can we do red spades? I think we can. No, we can't do red spades, so he's gonna be black here. Okay. We're gonna flip those actually. I don't really care about the position of them. So who cares? It's really the, oh, watch out, Thomas. We got an issue here. If we double click this here and we need to flip this one. Okay. Uh, I think we need to rotate a little bit, but that blood right there is, I don't like how it's, this is called a tangent issue where two graphics are sort of touching each other just barely and the mind can't comprehend it. The mind has trouble with that kind of stuff. And so it's important to, where the F is the blood? Yeah, it's important to move it in a, in a better position here, something like that. Yeah, there we go. Are the card suites suits <laughs> related to the type of weapon? No, no, no. That's too, too. That's too use. Um, well, I wouldn't call that useless actually, because some people might actually really be interested in that kind of thing. I'm not. So, 
<laughs> I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, one final thing. Uh, well, we could probably do one down here as well. Again, we've got an issue with the blood. Things can get messy really fast when you go through this kind of detail. John one says, I would do that. Yeah, a lot of game developers, when they focus on that kind of stuff, they're rewarded han um, handsomely for it by the game dev community and by the gaming community because there's such attention to detail. But we, ha we, just, we have a budget and we have a schedule and I'm just thinking, there's only so much I can handle here. So, in terms of, whoa, Thomas, watch out, buddy. No, stop, leave me alone, close. Where's my, oh, I'm getting, I'm getting mad. Wait, what the heck? Um, invert, delete. I'm trying to make this blood look kind of cool, watch. Now it looks like this hand-drawn paint. Isn't that cool, what I just did there? I blurred it, selected it, deleted, and now it looks cool. There we go. Um, still a problem. We need to shift it up a little bit like that. And now it's not really colliding with the club. Jason, I don't know where the ammo is going to be. Um, I think it'll probably be, it could be when you select it, a blurb appears. I, but, but then again, you need to see it, don't you? I think we could get away with it just being like this. 515 like that and then it's just on each one you know it's it is valuable information I get it um, I'd ra I, I'm a guy that's always style over substance <laughs> but let's uh let's get these uh spades no diamonds we need diamonds Well, Chris, you said what's wrong with displaying it at the center and updating it when you change the weapon? Uh, the problem is is that the player is going to want to look and observe sort of a bird's eye view of their inventory. And so I don't think they're gonna wanna go through each one and be like, how much ammo do I have in this or that or this or that? I, I don't know if that's, that would kind of annoy me personally. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, when the weapon wheel's active, it goes to zero. The frames per second goes to zero. What am I doing? Oh, the diamond. Diamonds, eh? We could do diamonds cards and see what we could find here. Yeah. Oompa loompa doop dee doo. I've got a part song puzzle for you. Oompa loompa. Okay, so diamonds, eh? Diamonds can be red. So we're going to convert that to a smart object, colorize. Bring it down. No, we don't. We, we do have a release date. I can't tell you what the release date is, though. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I will say if we add wear to the guns, I'm worried that it's gonna we're gonna lose. <sighs> yeah, you might be right. 
You might be right. Hmm. Sorry about the camera, guys. Well, okay, let's go ahead and get these. Uh, I, I feel like if we add too much, we're going to get in a situation where the player's overwhelmed, personally. And so I kind of want to just wrap up the cards. Yeah, I think I'm ready. So let's go ahead and wrap up the cards, guys. Uh, take this, take this. Take this one. Whoopsie. Not that one. Good. Okay, we're good with this one. Convert to smart object. Hey. Eh? Well, we need to make sure we're grabbing all of the filters over top of it. This is a pain in the butt. But we're good. Convert to smart object. <gasps> good. Okay. Burnt, burnt, burnt. Grab them all. Has anyone played Pal World? Tell me about it. Do you like it? Thomas Brush, are you going to deal with early game, though, when the player only has a weapon or two? No, they're faded out. So you can still see them. So you know, like, okay, one day I can get that cool-looking shotgun. I don't know. It kind of entices the player, makes them curious. I like it. Mike Jemmy says it's really surprisingly good. Why is it surprising that it's good? I mean, I'm genuinely curious. I don't like those kind of games at all, clearly. Um, but I would love to know. No. Almost there, guys. We're making progress. And what are we going to do after we make all these a smart object? Does anyone know? It's Fortnite with Pokemon. Wow, that's right up my alley. Sounds amazing. Nope, we're not gonna, yeah, we gotta layer the card order, that's right, and then we also have got to add drop shadow, and that drop shadow is going to, and also some uh, shadow on the left side of the card, like some some highlight or low light on the card, and then it's gonna be so cool because you're gonna see it uh, sort of pop and come to life. Almost there. I uh, there we go. Yes. Son of a bee. I think we have to rotate the cards, guys. But I think we'll be out. Shoot. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, we've got all of our cards actually. Bum ba da ba ba da ba da bum bum. And then we're gonna add a drop shadow and an inner shadow on the left side. There's our drop shadow, and then an inner shadow over here. It's global. Um, it doesn't need to be highlighted; it's a low light, and it's gonna be very subtle. It's just a little subtle. That's all. I could probably do it right here. Okay, we're going to copy this layer style. And we're going to paste it on the rest of them, hey? And then we're going to order this one up, bring it up to the top, eh? This one we bring up to the top, eh? These I want to go down to the bottom. And then this goes above it. This one goes above this one. That's it. Pretty cool. I'm, I am a little worried that they're not recognizable enough, but I think we'll be okay. 
it might be the blood honestly like there's certain parts where the blood is like way too much like for example you could oh shoot that's rasterized that's not good what about this one Hmm. There's just some of them that I think they don't need blood because there's just too much going on. But I think we're good. <laughs> well, yeah, we could do this. We could bring this down. I want that the bot. You might be right, actually. You might be right. I just felt like it would be cool if it was like, yeah, that you're right. You're totally right. Thank you so much. Um. Thank you, Flame Art. Very good. But the way this is going to work is we're going to actually darken the cards in Unity. So that the one you're selecting is like that. Which I think that looks amazing, honestly. Very visually appealing. Sweet, guys. What is this? Oh, that's cool. We need the flourishes, yeah. All right. Very, very good. Very, very good. I like it a lot. Very, very good. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out. That was really, really fun. And listen, um, today's video is sponsored by YouTube Game Dev. YouTube Game Dev is, well, I'm sponsoring myself. YouTube Game Dev is a massive program about how to make a YouTube channel with, well, Game Dev. So if you can focus your energy on creating games and also just creating devlogs or creating content for YouTube, you can actually turn that alone, just the YouTube side, into six figures. Um, no promises, but I just can tell you what I do, right? I run multiple businesses. I'm always spinning different plates. One of those is YouTube, right? And YouTube can generate a six-figure salary, and I'm gonna teach you how to do it. There's 10 days left to enroll in this course, and that's for real. It will close down after 10 days, and enrollment will close. 40% off, and you're also gonna get my, um, well, there's massive, massive curriculum here, actually. But you're also going to get conversations with Jonas Tyroller. You'll get conversations with Blackthorn Prod, um, Two Star Games, who created uh, Choo Choo Charles and has a really successful YouTube channel. And then also Andreas Ibrakis. Um, but you also get my fan base framework uh, course, which is all about how to secure a massive email list and also how to get YouTubers to stream your game with my free course, Stream My Game. So check it out below. By the way, if you're a student, let us know in the chat what you think about the program. And I will see you guys. I think I'm going to see you. Uh, yeah, we'll probably see you next week. Cheers. Have a good weekend, guys. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, click below. It's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which is really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell. Here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right. I'll talk to you later. Bye. I love you too.